Hello and welcome everybody, today we are in Dekker Warmond and today I'm going to teach you how you can do the rouleau like Stupa and we're going to analyze his rouleau and we're going to show you exercises that you can do to get close to Stupa's rouleau and his rouleau is the best in the world. I'm going to start right now. Um. You like it? Good match. Ladies and gentlemen, because it's December, I want to give something back to you. So in our shop racket team, if you buy a tactical paddle racket, you will get the official Otro Nivel t-shirt for free, which is worth of 40 euros. And if you buy from racketteam.com, you have the chance to also win a limited edition tactical paddle racket. How limited? There's only one of them. So we're gonna start off with the footwork. It's maybe the most boring part, but what does Stupa do to make it look so easy? What he does really well is that he crosses over with the feet and he makes a lot of space to get the kick to the fence. Special thanks to Frederik de Sengil. Uh, thanks a lot, Frederik. Um, his Instagram channel is very nice because you can see in slow-mo how the best players of the world are playing. So it's a very good way to learn technique or tactics if you watch his channel on Instagram. So what he does is that he's not prepared like, like this because he's already seeing that his opponent, Ale Galan, is playing the lob. So he's not... Here, he is already in this position, like the yellow lines. So he's already waiting for the lob here. So this saves him a lot of time, because if he goes to the, to the Vibora, he can step with the left foot, or he can step back to make space to go uh, towards the fence. So I normally don't do this. I'm normally in this position, and then I do this, but what he does well, and it saves a lot of time, this is what we call economical footwork. Alegran is playing the lob, and he knows he's gonna play the lob. His position is here. So his footwork, his left foot is in front, and his right foot is backwards. So, and what he does, his left foot goes first. So he's kind of moving sideways towards where he wants to be. And this is a bit faster than this typical warm-up move. You cannot go super fast like this. Both of his knees and his feet are aiming to the fence next to him. So when he's about to play the kick smash, the, the rouleau to the fence, his chest is aimed to the fence, his back is against to that fence, and the knees and the feet are positioned over there because he needs to come on the left side of the ball. So if you want to hit a good rouleau, you have to hit the ball from seven to two. You need to be able to get on this side of the ball. And his footwork is, makes it possible to do that. If Stupa would have been here, it would be very complicated with your arm to hit from seven to two on that side of the ball. So what he does really well is he's already with one foot there, he overcrosses and he turns his body a lot. So he's able to play the ball bounce fence or bounce side wall. What he also does really well is that he is quite high on his feet. So if you take a look at the feet of Stupa at his legs, He's not moving in the poop position. He is quite high. And this makes him move way faster. What a lot of players tend to do is they go down before they reach the ball. This is a shot that you want to hit high, so should you bend your knees? I think if you want to move faster, it's better to be quite high still. And then you could go high to low but you want to start to move high. That's why he's so fast. So then, shoulder rotation and upper body rotation. The feet go first, because if the feet are not correct, your upper body will not follow. So what you have to do is to imagine 
you're going to play to the fence. So the tube should aim to the fence. It's not so easy to play to the fence if the tube is positioned to the other side. Next, his elbow is further than his chest. That's quite interesting. So when he's playing the kick to the fence, his elbow is not next to him, but his elbow is further away than his chest. Because from this angle, you are able to kick to the fence. From this angle, from the angle next to you, it would be very complicated to get on the left side of the ball. So this is going to be the line that you hit the ball. So you need to hit the ball at seven and go all the way to two. If I'm hitting the ball on my right side, I can never get on the left side of the ball. This is a quite complicated shot to do. So I can never play a good rouleau if my contact point is closer to the middle as I am. So with this footwork, he hits it kind of above him. Then we go into the racket preparation. So what, what Stupa does really well is that his left hand is all the way up. This will help to calculate where the ball is. If your left hand is not high and it is down, you don't have any reference in, to get a good kick. So if I don't use my left hand in my kick smash, I was supposed to fail, but it's, it looks quite strange. It's very difficult to get a good sense in where the ball is, especially when it's windy or when, it's, when the conditions are tough. So that left hand all the way up is one of the most important items to have a good timing with the rouleau. His arms are quite close to each other. So this is one of the key items that this is a control shot. This is not a shot that you're gonna play 200 kilometers an hour. So when he's preparing, he's quite close. If you make a very big swing, it is a quite risky shot to take. So what he does really well is that he never plays it on full power. He actually makes a quite of a, of a small swing and able to control it and to play the ball down a lot. So if you look at this picture, his arms are so close to each other, it actually fits in this small circle and so are his legs. His legs are in this small circle and that helps a lot to get a lot of control in your rouleau. So also with the record preparation, you see that he knows he's gonna play a kick smash or a rouleau when he's moving backwards. So the moment he's back, his racket is prepared in this way. I think he does this to don't let anybody know what he's up to. Because the moment he's gonna start preparing with the back, with his racket here, his opponent's null is gonna be a rouleau or it's gonna be a kick smash. And it depends a lot um, if it's cold, he's not gonna go for the kick smash, so they know they, uh, Stupa's gonna play the rouleau and they know, the opponents know they have to defend the fence. So they can already kind of guess where, what he's going to do. But what he does really well is that he's moving here and the racket's not moving so much. It's totally in control. So they don't know because he can go up Bandeja, he can go up Fibora, he can go up, kick, he can do multiple things. So he's not showing what he's going to do, but also his racket is kind of already there. So his swing that he has to make is not gonna be a massive change, uh, which helps a lot to improve the control. And then before he hits, and this is what it makes his kick so special, and this is not what I would recommend, but when he's going for the kick and this is, his preparation, the top of his racket is actually facing to the ground, which, which makes it a very long trajectory to go to the ball. And he can kick a lot because he starts from this position. So from the top down, he goes top up. And he does this really, really fast. So his racket speed is quite fast, but he goes past the ball a lot. So for some players, if you don't have a lot of control over the ball yet, I would recommend to make it a little bit shorter to go from this position, Fibora position, upwards to make the corner. If you start feeling more comfortable, you can go more and more and more and more to Stupa. 
it's quite far. This, I would recommend for the kick smash to go outside the court if you feel comfortable, because you can generate a lot of power if you're coming from all the way here. This is a very relaxed motion. And what is also interesting is that his uh, right arm, his elbow is still quite close to 90 degrees, especially here. So when he goes down, his elbow stays behind the chest, but also quite close to 90 degrees. And the closer you are to 90 degrees, the more speed you will have. One of the most common mistakes is that when people play the kick smashes that they go all the way down here and you don't have so much space here. If you have your elbow very close to your, to your body, you cannot generate a lot of power. So this is what could go wrong in your kick smash. If you have more space, like here, it's way more relaxed. And so this is what I would recommend not to do from stupa, only if your technique is top notch. So one of the exercises that you can do is the bench exercise. This will help you to get used to the upper body rotation. So what a lot of players have is they are coming from tennis or they don't have a kick smash or badminton or any shot where you do an overhead where you kind of get your right shoulder forwards and you want your right shoulder actually backwards with this uh, kick smash, uh, which is kind of complicated. So if you just focus on getting a lot of muscles not movable, it will help you to get a better kick. So what you can do is to have the bench focused on the corner of your right-sided partner, toss the ball and try to kick to the fence. I think I just need to play from a sitting position next time. So if your toss is not great, you can also see now, you cannot cheat. Uh, so your toss needs to be correct and you can kind of feel what is right and what is wrong. So toss the ball, soft to the fence. And it doesn't have to be so short, uh, that was not my goal. But the goal is that you feel that, that if this is the, sh the ball, that you're hitting from seven to two and to get it soft to the fence. So this exercise also works really well because you force yourself to avoid that movement and because you, you turn your left foot towards the fence, you can train to softly kick to the glass or to the fence. You just need to get used to that movement and fixing the legs helps a lot because you can feel the kick. For me, I start most of the time to feel this, uh, the, the correct moment, mo motion, and to feel that you can brush the ball towards the right side. For me, that's the most important part. And if, you, if I put somebody in this position, it just helps to skip uh, one part because we have to focus on the feet first. But if we put the feet in a fixed position, it will help a lot to get that motion earlier, the connection with the kick. What will also help is to do the window wiper. So this is the top spin. It's not really the kick, but if you put your students or yourself with the left foot closer to the net and learn them to brush. So it would be good if you can get the ball higher ugh, than the glass. And this will help you to feel that you're brushing the ball and that brushing the ball part will actually make the ball go down, which makes it a safer shot than a flatter shot if you can get the technique right. So the flat to the fence is easier, but at some point, if you really know how to do the good kick, the kick becomes safer because the ball might go down a little bit more, you have more margin, you don't have to play so low over the net. So if Sasha holds the tube and makes sure that my elbow stays in this position, it will help me a lot to get kick. And with the tube, it is safer. Without the tube, it's not so safe. So Sasha has to push my elbow towards my fence and then I try to kick. So in this position, oh, I feel quite uncomfortable, but instead of telling somebody to keep their elbow close to the fence, it is also possible to do it in this way. 
or standing up. So if your tube is tall enough, you can also use it like that. I'm gonna do one more. So from here, uh, so I feel like I am kind of uh, locked to go there. I don't play my best kick at the moment because I would go a little bit more there, but it helps to get the elbow a little bit better in position. What will also help is to put your student on the yellow lines. I call it lines of cheese. But if you put them on the cheese, they are forced to play from that position. For me, this is how I normally do it. So for me, it's okay, comfortable. But many players, their feet are aimed to the, to the glass on the other side of the court, and then it's quite hard to kick. So if you put your students on the correct lines, they might be able to get the kick sooner. Oh. Yeah, so if the lines, like this line is faced to the fence, and the other line is faced to the net, kind of the door, this is one I have, so it makes me feel very comfortable. Stupa has even more sometimes. So from this position, you try to play it without moving. When Stupa was playing it, he was playing it from one foot, which I do not recommend. <laughs> so we're gonna do the easier Stupa kick version. Okay, so the hitting part is when he hits the ball, what, uh, what's very interesting is that he hits the ball quite high on the racket. So when he's playing the kick smash to the fence, he's hitting it super high. So he actually hits it with a straight arm which is not always what everybody recommends because with the kick smash you might, if you go for the portrait, you might want to hit it a little bit lower in able to hit more effect. But what he's doing in this specific shot is that he's playing a very, very short angle bounce fence because his opponent is very close to the net. But also if you hit it higher, you actually play faster and you can generate more kick. So he, his contact point is very high because he's, he's jumping, he's hitting it on the top of the racket, and his arm is absolutely straight above him. So if your contact point is, would be more next to you, your contact point will drop. And it would be riskier to play the rulo. So with the rulo you want to hit the ball at the highest point, if you watch this stupa rulo, and then he can bring it down a lot. So the moment He's about to hit the ball, the left hand drops a little bit, but the left hand still aims kind of towards the fence, and his upper body goes a little bit more to, with his left hand towards the fence. And this will help a lot in order to make the bounce fence ball happen. So he's going from this position to more or less there, and then he rotates. And after he's hitting the shot, that's the last thing that we sp speak about, is that he is quite long in the follow through, which that's amazingly difficult to do. So he's so relaxed with this shot, is that he is going quite far. And I think most players end up being too close to themselves. And I think what you should focus on, on being close to you when you're about to hit the ball, and when you hit the ball, you make yourself bigger. So if you can go and follow through longer towards the fence, the ball will actually go to the fence more often. So if I'm going to play the flat smash straight, I want to go straight as long as possible. And if I play to the kick, I go, towards that part of the fence as long as possible. And this, I think the most important tip that I can give you today about Stupa's Rulo is all because his upper body is so in control. He's not rotating, he's not doing anything. He is preparing with the correct rotation and when he's hitting the ball, his upper body is like a frozen ice block. And that will help a lot to get that follow through towards the fence. Because the moment you start to have a very fast upper body rotation, it's quite complicated to get that control in the kick. So what he does so well is when he's playing, he remains kind of blocked. 
and that will make his arm go towards he wants to play. So he's forcing, he's blocking himself, he is playing the shot, and his upper body is quite easy. Nothing much going on there. But that's quite difficult to do, that your arm is relaxed, but your upper body is the, the anchor. And also, he's not playing the kick smash on 100%. <laughs> so the, the rouleau is not a shot that he's going for full power. Because if he would go for, for full power, you see my upper body is going everywhere. I'm not stupa, of course, but if he's playing it on 70%, he can control it way better. So if stupa is playing on 70%, we should never go faster than 70%. We should go aim for 60, maybe 50% of our power. Uh, because stupa is able to control his body really well on 70% and probably 120%. But for us mortal club players, we should try to play this one softer because the moment we play faster than we should, we're going to lose control on the upper body, which makes it very hard to play the good rouleau. I hope this helped a lot. And if you want to see more videos uh, about the, pro, uh, the pros playing paddle, then uh, please let us know below uh, what shot you would like to see next. So we did Stupa's rouleau. And maybe we should do uh, Sanyo's defense or something like this. And so let me know below. Thank you to Sangil for the videos. And we'll see you next episode. Hasta luego. Ciao. Adios.